Okay, we're going to take a look at method two now. We're, uh, we're going to put U here and J here because it really doesn't matter. The only thing it might influence is the actual value of K, the interpretation of K. But remember, K is a constant of variation. So again, when you're in an exam situation and you know for sure that the question involves direct variation and you want to use this formula, of course, you can adjust depending on the letters. I'm just using J for Jamaica and U for US. But... Some person might be panicking, wondering whether they should put U here or J here or J here or U here. Of course, K is always here. But it really doesn't matter whether they put U here or J here. Once you work it out correctly, you're going to get the final answer, which is 840. So let's take a look at that. So method two. We're going to be looking at method two here. And again, we know that the formula for direct variation is that but let's say we went ahead and did this right remember in method one we put j here and then u here but i'm saying it doesn't really matter so you don't have to worry about it put u here and j and then proceed now remember what the question said it said 360 jamaican is required to purchase us three dollars so the first sentence so um three dollars us um is purchased by 360 Jamaican, right? So remember, this is US and this is Jamaican here. So to find the value of K now in this method, right? So we're dividing um, 3 by 360, right? And when we divide 3 by 360, we know that that's going to be the value of K. That's actually going to be 1 over 120, which is equal to K. All right now you can keep this so we can find the decimal of it so 1 divided by 120 um, that seems to be 0 0.0 to the third so that would be 8 run about that figure and we can stop there if you want 1 2 3 nice so in this particular method when we put u first and j first this is the value of k 0 0.0083 and notice in method one when we put j first and u second the value of k is 120. why because when we worked it out this way the 360 for, was for jamaica and the 3 was for u here so whenever we have it like this then the value that we got for, for k which is 120 interpretation was at 120 jamaican per one us dollar or 120 Jamaican purchases one US dollar. In this instance, when we put U first and then J here, we got this for K. So what does it mean? Now remember, we had US here and Jamaican here. So this interpretation really is, all right, um, US per one Jamaican dollar, that will be the value for K. So it means this amount of cents, this amount of US cents is worth one Jamaican dollars. That's what this is saying. So this interpretation of saying this amount of US cents is worth one Jamaican dollar. You don't really have to worry too much about the interpretation. What you need to worry about is the value of K, right? So in this method, the value of K would be this. Yeah, this is correct. Your final answer is going to be the same as the 840 that you got that you got here. You're going to see that in a little bit, right? But depending on what you put here sometimes, it affects the value of K, but you're still going to end up with the correct final answer. You're going to see that. So, right? So what I'm trying to get at is don't worry too much whether I put in U here or J here. Just find the value of K and then carry on and then you're good to go. So in the second part of the statement, it says, now how much how much Jamaican is needed to purchase US $7? Um, so that's the part that we need to answer. So we have the US and we need to find the Jamaican. So we're just continuing with the working out here. Very, very straightforward. So we're going back to this formula that we use in this method. All right. So now it is 7K is this 0 0.0083 times the Jamaican. And the Jamaican amount is what we need to find. So we're transposing for J. So 7 divided by 0 0.0083 is going to give us the Jamaican amount. So let's work that out on the calculator. 
and see how much. Now, the only thing that uh, might happen in terms of it being slightly different from this value is that the decimal point we, we round off by. But let's just divide the 7 by this and see what we get. So 7 divided by 0 0.0083 gives us a value of, in this particular case, it's 843, which is a little bit more than um, what we'd have here. But it's because of the decimal. If we had used this, it would have been far more accurate, which is why I keep saying fractions are better to use than decimals sometimes. So in this particular case, right, what we would have is 843.37 Jamaica. We got three, 840 here, and the only reason there's a difference here is because I round off. So if I had stuck with this, I would get the 840. So let's see how that turns out if I use a fraction instead of decimal. So u equals k times j, 7, and remember I'm using this now, 1 over 120 instead of the decimal. So 1 over 120 uh, times j, which is the same as j over 1. So 7 equals, when you're multiplying fractions, 1 times j is j, 120 times 1 is 120. Numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. And you cross multiply one sorry seven times 120 equal j and you can clearly see now that you're going to get the exact 840 so you can clearly see we get the exact 840 when we use a fraction this is one of the reasons why when i'm in class i keep telling you the fraction is far more accurate than decimal sometimes because once you use a decimal you're going to have to start rounding off and that will influence your the accuracy of your answer so now that I've used a fraction over here, okay, you can clearly see that I'm getting the exact 840. So uh, that just speaks to the significance of the fraction as opposed to the decimal. But anyway, you should get the idea. So based on the question, it was direct variation. And again, it doesn't matter whether they put U here first or J first. It just will possibly have a different outcome for K. But when you continue working out, you should still get the, the same answer. If it's a decimal, that you work with, you have to round off, it might influence the accuracy of your answer. If you stick with a fraction, you're gonna get it perfect. All right, so I hope you found this video insightful, and I'll see you guys on the next video when we look at an example involving inverse variation.